Good morning. How's everybody? So I ask you as we were seeing that, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Is he welcome here? Is he welcome here? And I hope so. I hope so. I hope you feel the love of Christ in this place. I hope you feel his spirit and uh, we're just excited to, to be together, you know. Uh, well, I'm jumping ahead. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> okay, here we go. If you're visiting with us this morning, if you are our guest, we, we hope you do feel that love of Christ and invite you. There's a white uh, card in the seat pocket in front of you. would love for you to register and let us know you were here. You don't have to do that, but... Um, you know, uh, we're going to be talking about the church today, and, and uh, one of the things about church is community. It's connection, and um, we, we want to be that kind of church. If you are our guest today, if you want to fill out that, and, and there's check the little box that says, I'm new to Wiley Methodist, you can put your email there if you want to be on our email list. We have a Wiley Methodist app. There's a lot of ways that you can uh, hear about things that are coming up in our church. At the end of the service, I will be out in the foyer down at this end. Would love to, to meet our guests and uh, have a gift for you and uh, would just love to get to know you a little bit. So I uh, invite you to do that. And if you don't want to come out and meet me, that's okay. That's okay. I won't, I won't be offended. Uh, you can leave the card there in your seat as well. So um, I invite you to turn to Matthew 16 this morning. Matthew 16. I love this passage. I love this moment in, uh, in history that is recorded here, this moment that Christ, he's hanging out with his disciples, and he has this conversation with them. And I just, I just love this, this scripture. Matthew 16, beginning in verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But what about you, Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Let's pray. Father, we just sang the word majesty. You are indeed majestic. There is no one like you. We ask you now, Holy Spirit, to come, and we have invited your presence. We ask you now to speak with power and authority, and that's the only way you speak. We, we invite it. We invite that. And transform us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've been kind of walking through the Apostles' Creed. Sometimes, you know, we say things. Anybody ever just recite things and we don't really remember kind of what we're reciting? We just kind of say it. And I know some of you come from different traditions and may have grown up uh, saying the Apostles' Creed in church. And some of you may not have. And it's... Uh, you know, it's not mandated in Scripture, but, but uh, it is the core fundamental beliefs that, that we believe in. So we've been kind of walking through that, and this sermon series is called We Believe. We Believe, just the foundation of our faith. And in today's message is we believe in the Holy Catholic Church. Now, that word Catholic, we're going to get there in a second. It, it trips some people up uh, when we recite that if they, they don't understand that. So uh, we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Um, I, was, I was reading about this, uh, this story about this uh, kindergarten class. We had a kindergarten class last week. I thought we needed another kindergarten class. But uh, they, were, they were trying to, the kindergarten teacher wanted the, the students to be able to, 
to share a little bit about their, their faith, what, what in may, you know, show and tell, kind of bring something that uh, was an illustration of their faith, that they could just, something that they could demonstrate to the class. And the first little boy got up there, Benjamin. He said, I'm Benjamin, and I'm Jewish, and this is a star of David. And everybody kind of oohed and awed a little bit. And then the next little girl, Mary, she got up, she said, I'm Mary, and I'm Catholic, and this is a crucifix. And then this third little boy, Timmy. Timmy, th Timmy got up and he said, I'm Methodist and this is a casserole. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, I'll explain it to you later, Robert. I have to always have to explain my jokes to Robert later. Uh, you know, we, all, we have all sorts of ideas about what church is, and, and, and if we're honest... Um, I found this, and, and I place myself in this group. We, we tend to be uh, church consumers, don't we? Uh, we, we? And it's normal. I mean, it's pretty normal. We, we go to church, and, and we are in consumer mode. It's like we're at a restaurant. It's like, do I like, do I like the, the dishes, and do I like the prices? And in churches, we, do I like the music? Do I like the, the preacher? Do I like the preaching? Do I like the people? Do I, did they have a good Sunday school program for my children? All, and we, we, we tend to be consumers, but, uh, and that, again, that's okay. It's understandable. It's human nature. But church is so much more than that. Church is so much more than that. So I want us to, uh, what, what is church? What, what uh, is it this building? I mean, is, is this the church? Is this a tangible facility? Is this the church? So let's unpack it a little bit today, um, what church is. We believe that the church, first thing is, we believe the church is holy. We believe the church is holy. Now, uh, we believe the church is holy because God the Father's holy. Yes? I mean, He's holy. The, I love the passage out of Isaiah in chapter 6 of Isaiah. Uh, and Isaiah has this vision of, uh, of these angels that come in and, they're, and they're, they're crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. Now, if you, if you, I could preach on that passage because that's a great passage to preach on. But uh, when... When Isaiah was in the presence of, of God and this holiness, it says that his train filled the temple, the robe and to fill the temple. And it's like he's overwhelmed. These angels are crying out. He's holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. And what happens to Isaiah? He's convicted. He's convicted. Something's just, it's like he realizes, I'm in the presence of this holy God and I'm not holy. I'm undone. I, I, I am a man of unclean lips, he says. And he says, and not only that, but I live in a, in a nation of unclean people. Everybody has unclean lips. We are undone. We are uh, in this presence of a holy God. And so we are called as the church. We believe the church is holy because God is holy. So God the Father is holy. God the Son is holy. The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshower you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Jesus is holy. Jesus is holy. And we see this scripture that today when Peter's asked by Jesus, who, who do you say that I am? He says, you are the Holy One of God. You are the Christ, the Holy One of God. God, the Holy Spirit, is holy. And it's even in the name. <laughs> we, I, you know, I don't really have to unpack that one very far. Holy Spirit, uh, duh. I mean, we, we, we probably ought to get that. Well, if God is holy and we are God's people, guess what? He's calling us to be holy. Christ followers are called to be holy. Now, we've lost that, I, and I'm not going to I'm not going to digress. I just preached a series on this. If if anybody missed any of it, you can go back on our website and get it. But um, the the issues of our day, all of these issues of our day, it's it's not about it's not about human sexuality. That, those are not the issues of the day. It's like are we called to be holy or not? 
God's called us to be a holy people. Not, I mean, he's, he, he's watching us to see if we're holy when we're doing our taxes. Uh-oh. Are we just fudging just a little bit? I, I, someday I'm going to preach a sermon on this. It's going to be a while. I, I, I've had this title in my mind for several years, and the title of the sermon would be, and will be someday maybe, Driving 71 in a 70. Come on. Who else does it? You know what I do? I, the interstate is 75 now. I just, I'm like, I think I can do 76. I don't think they'll stop me for 76. Come on, I know I'm not the only one. And don't we do that, church? Surely, surely I can just drive 76. God won't notice 76. <laughs> That's too slow. You are not driving the church van anymore. That's our youth pastor. That's too slow. Man. That's what you get when you get these young bucks and youth. No, I'm just kidding, Brent. You do a good job. God's calling us to be holy, church. Holy when we're on the internet. Uh oh. And I've, I've talked about this before, but man, it, it's like you got to work at that. I mean, you know, when, when I was a kid, if you, wanted to, if you wanted to look at inappropriate stuff, you had to go to a lot of trouble. You know, either your friend was hiding it under his mattress or you had to go to, you know, put a, put a disguise on and go to the drugstore and buy something. He's like, are we carrying it around with us? We're carrying the opportunity to be unholy around with us. I mean, he wants, us, he wants our conversations to be holy, he, how, we, how we speak of people and to people, even, not just verbally, but, but on, it, on Facebook, on social media, all those different things. He, he wants, he's calling his followers to be holy. First Peter says, just, just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. He, he, he's, not, he's not impressed if, as long as you don't get stopped by the highway patrol. He's not impressed if 76 will get you, if you can pass the patrol officer and not get stopped. That doesn't impress God at all. He's calling us to be holy. You are a chosen people. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of dark, darkness and into this wonderful light. He is calling us to be holy because it brings him glory. Um, I see it all the time. A fallen cre uh, Christian, man, brings... Uh, uh, let, me, let me figure out how I want to word this. We do great damage to the gospel when a Christian falls. Maybe that's, maybe that's the way to say that. We do great damage. Because if we're professing with our mouth something and our life doesn't line up with that, we do great damage. The church, we're called to be holy because God is holy. And he's called us out to be holy. Now, and, and yet, we got this, this really horrible thing that going on called the flesh, don't we? You know, Paul talked about it. I believe it's Romans 7. He talked about this, this struggle, this, well, I want to do this. This is what I know I should do, but I found myself doing this. And it's like, and I can't, I know I want to do this, but I just can't seem to quite carry it out. It's like, and he comes to the end of that struggle and he says, what a wretched man I am. Who will save me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. So our only shot of walking in holiness is to, to be consumed with God. I mean, just to, to, I tell people to press into God. It's like, man, we need, we need God, 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 God. That's why we need to be in worship. 
That's why we need to be in God's Word. That's why we need to be praying to Him. That's why we need each other. There's accountability and there's, there's encouragement and all sorts of things that comes from community. Man, a, a fallen Christian, Christian does great damage to the gospel. God is still God, whether we fall or whether we walk faithfully. God is still God. But the, but the message of the gospel suffers when we're not holy, walking out our holiness, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Secondly, we believe, and we recite this, we believe in the, that the church is Catholic. <laughs> and that, I get a lot of people asking, what? Wait, what? We're not Catholic? Well, and if you'll notice, notice there, even on my, head, my slide, it's a little C, which, which the old language of the, the Apostles' Creed, we say that Billy or I say this from time to time when we, when we uh, recite the Apostles' Creed, that that word Catholic, uh, it's old language that uh, means universal. It means we are one. Uh, there is only uh, one church. There's not a bunch of churches we may worship in different buildings and we may call ourselves by different names and so forth, but the church, there is one church. Now, um, Jesus' prayer, and I, mean this, I love this, it's kind of like if you know that Jesus knew he was going to the cross, he knew that his time on this earth was, was short, and he's praying, he's praying in front of the disciples, and, he's, and, and I don't know about you, but when I've seen this with people that I've uh, served, uh, when you know time is short, you want to make your words mean something. You want, you want to say some things that are significant. Listen to this, this, one of the last prayers that Jesus prayed. My prayer is not for them alone. He's speaking of the disciples. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message. Who is he talking about? You and me, right? That all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they be brought to complete unity. Now, there's a purpose to the unity. To let the world know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So he's, he's, his prayer is, God, help those that, that come to believe in me through this message. Help them to be one. Now, you can't be united Unless you're, you're united through something. I mean, something has to be the focal point that unites us. I've said this illustration before. When I was growing up, uh, Cheryl and I graduated from Abilene High School. We were Eagles. That's for all of you, for the you heathen cougars out there. <laughs> and and I, I've said this kind of, what, it helps me to understand unity. Look, on, on that Friday night once a year when the Eagles and the Cougars met, I promise you the two sidelines were not unified. I promise you. There was no unity because they each had a different purpose to kick the rear end of the other, other people on the other side of the field. So you can't be unified unless you, unless you have common purpose, something in common to unite you. What unites us as Christians and makes us one? Christ. <laughs> There's a reason that we're called Christians. <laughs> it's in the name. We, you know, the, and, and this has been misinterpreted. A lot of people, the passage we read today out of Matthew 16, Jesus, you know, Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and then Jesus responds that uh, on this rock, I will build my church. And a lot of people uh, have misinterpreted that to say, Peter was, you know, like whatever, the first pope, or he was, the, it was founded on Peter and all this like. No. No. You know what he built his church on? The fact that he was the Christ. He was the Christ. And he still is the Christ. <laughs> that is the commonality of us as Christians. And it's like he's calling us to be holy because he is holy and, and we, he's calling us to be Catholic or one, universal, because he and the Father are one. And he's the Christ. 
And, we, and, and that's what brings us together. You know, um, we, and, we, and this is one of the issues going on in, in the Methodist church now. It's like there's people that are battling to save the institution, and they're talking about unity, but, it, but their solution to unity is, is to divide. Let's stay, let's stay united by dividing into three different groups that believe different things. No, that's not unity. That's not unity. But true unity, founded on, on God's word, founded on Jesus being the Christ, that God is holy. True unity pleases God and it brings God glory. Listen to Psalms 133. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. For there, now this is interesting, for there the Lord commands his blessing. So he doesn't, just, he doesn't just go, oh, that's really cool. It's like, well, I think I'll bless that. No, he commands his blessing when we are unified in Christ. You want to be blessed? Be unified in Christ, and we will be blessed. And I, I, I believe it with all my heart. Uh, this, is, this is old news. If you're newer to our church, uh, 16 years ago, our church split, and I, and I really felt like uh, the Lord was telling me that when that I came, I was pastor right after that happened, and I remember very clearly the Lord was showing me in my heart, just focus on me. I'm the Christ. Just focus on me and be about my business. And, I, and the call has not changed in my heart. And I, don't, I believe in God's heart. The call has not. Just focus on me. Live together in unity based on this foundation, on this rock that Jesus is the Christ. Which leads me to my third point. We believe the church is founded on Christ. Um, and it's, think about this foundation. I remember back in my, and, and Brother Butler back there used to call me, I used to work for the appraisal district 25, 30 years ago, and uh, he, and no boos or hisses or anything? Okay. Uh, and I remember Butler used to call me a drive-by appraiser. I, you remember that, Lee? Man, I tell you, I'm going to pray for you, buddy. That's tacky. Uh but I remember there's this one particular guy, he, had, he came in to see me. Every year he came in to see me and uh, protesting the value of his home. And he had this really nice big home. I mean, you drive by it and you look at it and you go, man, that's a, that's a nice home. That's probably worth, you know, X amount of dollars just based on all the others around here. And I remember that he'd come in and he'd show me these pictures and I actually went to his house and looked at it and it's like, man, that thing was, foundation was falling apart on this thing. He, I don't know when they built it, they didn't, they didn't shore up the foundation properly or whatever. And man, on the outside, you look at it and go, man, that's a nice one. That's a nice home. And you walk in, and you know, there'd be gaps in the ceiling, you know, two inches, two inch gaps. And it was just, the house was a mess. And this, uh, I guess it's been summer before last, Cheryl and I had an opportunity to go to Italy and, and uh, spend a few days there, and we, um, we got to go to Pisa. It's not the, it's not the Leaning Tower pizza, pizza, you know. It's not pepperoni or anything. Pisa. And we got to go. You got, you got that picture? Now, you know what? I, we ran, it's really weird because you can't see the tower, and you ran, you ran this corner, and you're probably 100 yards from it when you ran the corner, and you can actually see it because there's a lot. It's kind of a residential area. And we rounded the corner, and I'm looking up at that, and I, and I went, dang, man, that's leaning. <laughs> I mean, it just, it really, pictures kind of, you kind of see it, and, but it's a really tall tower, and you're looking at it, and you're going, holy cow, how's that thing standing up? How is it standing up? And, and as you get over there a little bit closer to it and all, um, I, and, I, and you read about it and so forth, they, there was a flaw, you know, and so forth uh, when they built it, and that's why it started leaning. And they have, over the years, now it's such a, a draw for them with uh, people that come to see it. They want it leaning now because, I mean, if they straightened it up, <laughs> everybody goes, well, that's just, another, that's just another tower. I don't think I don't need to see that. But they have shored up the foundation to keep it from falling, 
but not too much because they still want it leaning. <laughs> Don't we do that in our lives? I, that just kind of struck me right now. Don't we do that? I want to, I, I just want to be pretty good, God. I, I'm not going to. I don't want to surrender everything to you. Some of this stuff is pretty precious to me. And, and the first thing that comes to my mind is this right here. Lord, that, I give you everything but this. I mean, y'all, I, I need, should have had the, the picture today. I've got a car, cartoon where the, the guy's being baptized. It's a drawing and shows the water line hits him about right here in the wall. It's up like this. Water line hits him. I love that cartoon. Probably my favorite cartoon. All right. No, it's, it's not about money. It's but but we don't we don't quite want everything. We're not quite ready to surrender everything. Lord, you can be Lord of everything but this. Maybe it's not the wallet for you. Maybe it's relationship. Maybe, Lord, I, I don't want you to be Lord of, of this relationship because I'm really angry at that person. You can have everything else, but my anger towards that person, I'm, I want to hang on to that. Can I hang on to that? Uh, Lord, I, I, I'm just going to drive 76. I, it's close. Are, are we this leaning tower piece? Are we, have we shored up our foundation, but we, we still got a little, little tilt, a little tilt? Jesus said, on this rock, the fact that he is the Christ, he would build his church. And the, and the gates of, of hell would not prevail against it. Now, let me tell you, uh, one thing I don't worry about is the church going away. You know, we, it's under assault. Let me, I promise you, if you haven't noticed, the church is under assault. Christians are under assault. But... but we have Jesus' promises that hell itself would not prevail against the church. As long as we, are, the foundation is on Christ. Uh, this old hymn came to my mind as I wrap up here. My, this old hymn came to my mind, the, My Hope is Built. It uh, was written by, I actually did a little research on this. It was written by a, a pastor, Edward Mott, 1834. I'm sorry y'all's pastor hasn't got any talent. This guy had some talent. My, and I just want to read a, a couple of, couple of uh, verses here because this is, I mean, this is all founded on Scripture. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. In other words, when life is going great, I don't put my trust there. I put my trust on Jesus, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You know, uh, think about it. Everything else is fleeting. Think about it. I, good looks is fleeting. I'm example A. Hair, Robert, for you and I. I'm picking on you today, Robert. Hair is fleeting. Our, our youth is fleeting. Our money, we may, maybe we have it to the grave, but guess what? It's not going to do us any good after that. So our, our finances are fleeting. Our health, I don't know, if we live long enough, these bodies are going to wear out. Knees quit working, hips quit working, backs quit working. There are things, you know, cancer and all sorts of things that we deal with. These bodies wear out. On Christ the, rock, the solid rock I stand. That's not fleeting. It'll be there. To, it was there yesterday. It'll be there today, and it'll be there tomorrow. And and what's so amazing to me is, guys, He's holy. He's God. And we're not. And He loves us. Is it, is that blow anybody else away besides me? Maybe I just know I'm undeserving of that. I fail him all the time but he loves me and he loves you when darkness veils his lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale 
My anchor holds within the veil. What's the anchor? Christ. Jesus is the Christ. That's the anchor. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found. Dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless, faultless to stand before the throne. You know, uh, someday we're all going to stand face to face to the Lord. And, and he's not, he's, he's not going to be impressed that we drove 76 in a 75, or that we drove 75 in a 75, for that matter. I, I know, I, I've, I've told this to people that were literally on their last days and hours on this earth. And, I, and I've said, you know, when I come face to face, I don't know about anybody else, but when I come face to face with, with the Lord and he asked me to make an accounting of my life, I'm going to say, I'm with him. I'm going to point to Jesus. I'm with him. We're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. We, we, his church, he's calling us to be holy and to be one and to, be, to put our foundation on him. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Let's, if you just bow your heads, pray with me. Father, thank you for your church. And Father, I know we are just a portion of it gathered here in this room, but I thank you for this portion of your church, the people that call Wally you know, I'm at this home. God, I thank you for their heart. I thank you, Father, that sometimes I feel like, as they say, I'm preaching to the choir because I know so many are walking this stuff out faithfully. But, Father, I also know that your standard of holiness is far beyond our ability to walk out. So give us the power of your Holy Spirit to live in a holy way, in a, in a way that brings you glory. Convict us where we, where we aren't there. Convict us and show us how. Thank you for your church. Thank you that you are the Christ, our living hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Pastor Jeff Hatcher with Wiley United Methodist Church in Abilene, Texas. I want to thank you for listening to this message from God's Word today. Uh, I want to remind you that you have a Savior his name is Jesus, and he loves you. I also would like to, if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to, to pray this simple prayer with me. Father, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I confess it. I repent of my sin, and I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I ask you to wash me as white as snow. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you prayed that prayer maybe for the first time today, I want to invite you to do four things. First of all, to share that decision you've made with a member of the clergy. Don't try to walk this journey alone. And then secondly, I invite you to be baptized. Jesus himself commanded us that we should celebrate our faith through baptism. And then I invite you to get into God's word. A book of John is a great place to start. And not because uh, somehow reading the Bible makes us a good person, but because there's life in God's Word. It's His inspired, holy Word. And then finally, I invite you to find a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church to be a part of. If, if you have any questions at all, I just want you to know that I'm available. You can contact me at my email, jhatcher at wileymethodist.org. God bless you.